Hello there and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mbark and I will come you to our sixth, sixth lecture of uh, creating a complete uh, inventory management system. Without wasting much time, let's go and proceed from where I stopped at the previous lecture. Uh, we know, you know, always do 60 minutes, I mean 40, 60 minutes, but today we're going to do 40, so I'll start our timer. Let me go ahead and put our timer very far from us. Okay, let us put it there. All right. So in the previous lecture, we stopped at this point where we needed to display the image in the grid. So Laravel admin has Laravel admin has has what we call custom display. And then this custom display, when you read the documentation, they show you so many things. Among the things that they show you, they show you how you can display images, even the image corrosors. Okay, so this is how you display an image. You just simply, so you see this is our image, you see? Sorry, where are we? We are here. Okay, so this is our image. So if you want to display an image, you just simply come here. Where is our image? Here. And attach what you call image like this. So by doing image, it is going to do a go ahead and display the image is beautiful. Can you see that? That is so beautiful. You see? By just simply attaching image and then you'll see the image is displaying. So there are more parameters that you can do. For example, you can limit the image size. Okay? You can limit the image size. Let's say, for example, you said we find that image too big. We can just simply put here an empty string and then you pass so in case you have maybe another different base url you can put here and then you pass here the width and height of your image you see so it puts 50 50 and then you come and refresh then your image will be resized down to 50 sizes can you see that is so nice i hope you can see that you see our images are there so you can be able to know okay these are fruits these are what by just simply simply doing that all right so the next thing um in case you have like a, a, a group of images like uh, when you're going to see the products you're going to have multiple images for a product i'll show you how you can be able to do what to do some json and convert those product into i mean and convert those images to be able to to even view them in form of what in form of corasso so that is how you display images now uh there is uh, a plugin even this laravel admin has plugins called light box so light box can allow us even to preview the images and zoom them and even download them okay so let's go ahead and learn how to add light box into our laravel admin and then we use it for the rest of our application so you just simply come here and search laravel admin light box yeah, i think that's it so you'll find it here it's an extension on the grid on of Laravel admin so you can say Laravel admin lightbox extension then you click here and then it will take you to the github so this is the github of lightbox extension hope you can see that so this is how i'm going to show you how we install it and then that lightbox will enable us to click on an image and then we view it in full size all right let's go ahead and install lightbox so to install lightbox you just simply run this command composer require Laravel admin lightbox just copy it as it is there Okay, copy that command, then open your terminal. So this the fir this first terminal is running our project. So I'll come to the next terminal here and clear the screen. Let me open a new terminal. Okay, so in this terminal, I'm going to run this method. I'll go ahead and put that method there. Okay, so it's going to run our oh, Laravel admin light box. So it will install the light box. Okay. After installing it, then they say that you should run this one for publishing it. Then you publish it. It's not published. After publishing it, then they say that we should go to configuration administrator and then go to extension and add this piece of line. Let's do that. So you come here to configure. I mean, you come to a project. Come to. Come to configuration, admin, and then you come to extensions. Come to extensions, okay. 
in this extension this is where we'll be adding extension we're going to add an extension called image light box this one here we add it here see there you go so this is what you add there then after what they say next okay now they say that's all so to use it you just simply put picture here and then add light box let's go ahead and try to use it so here refresh aha uh -huh. let's come now to our project which is this one here so instead of putting this is the image let's try to put light box instead of image and we see what we shall have refresh uh oh it's not like that they say that you have to put your picture just trying and see what i'll get they say that you have to put here picture not image so let's go ahead let me first remove this one and let's see so let's come and refresh yep uh so uh there are just those parameters that are causing confusion so you see now when i click it zoom the image so let's limit so you can as well put here the word picture instead of column it is all the same i think picture is not working let's stick with image okay so just add light box there okay so after adding light box also light box has some parameters that you can add in so if you're going to have multiple pictures you can add gallery if you want to enable the zoom and zoom out you can enable them by adding those parameters there so let's go ahead and add the width and height so if you want to limit the width and height you just simply come here and say light box and then add the square bracket i mean add the array okay which is in square bracket and then specify the width and height so if you come and refresh here we shall see that we have the limited width and height but the special thing that we've had we have now have you can click on the image and view it okay they say if you want to enable the zooming you can just simply add this there okay so come here and add zoom and make it to true let us see zooming and make it true sorry refresh here see we can i think the zooming is on there <laughs> All right, so that's how you do it. I think that's all you need to know about Lightbox. That's all. Okay, they say that you can even add some classes and say maybe, for example, you want it to become maybe a rounded. So you can add those classes there. So for example, you can just simply come here and add your extra classes, okay? For example, you can put here rounded and then put thumbnail also. So your images will be rounded. So there's a bootstrap class called rounded circle. So if you have maybe your own CSS classes, you can be able to add them there. And then the those classes will be implemented on those images. Okay. Yep. So that thumbnail will go ahead and make that kind of thumbnail at you see this thumbnail. It will be it will go ahead and make that kind of thumbnail so if you want to remove that thumbnail uh, on it you can just simply pass no plus here and then it will remove that thumbnail and then you'll have those square images but if you want to have the thumbnail that before thumbnail uh design you can add it you can leave the way it is and then you'll have this so that is beautiful now since now we have the categories we have the products what next what next we are now going to go ahead and now create the products but let us go and reference our our what our data our database structure so we can be able to know that we are moving with the right thing so um so we're going to have yam where's our database structure I don't think I deleted it. I think it's here. So we have finished the company, I think the users, we have finished stock category, subcategory. Now the next thing that we're going to go is the stock items. Okay. But before we go stock items, as I told you that uh, we may need to map each stock item to each respective uh, financial year it belongs to. Okay. So we need to create also financial years. Okay. So the um, we can call them financial period, okay? So that so that the company should be able to know, okay, in this financial period, we made this particular amount of money, and this is the amount of money that we have, and then generate the maybe others they can be counting after two months, others after one month, others one after one year, something like that. But each record should be able to do what to be attached to a specific financial period, 
okay so let's go ahead and create the financial period first and then after we'll go ahead and create the stock items records okay let's go ahead and do that so we're going to create a new model called financial period so i'll go ahead and come to our heart and come to our um, important commands and then an important commands i'm going to create a new model here that i'm going to call financial financial what financial period like this okay so this financial period this financial period it is where we're going to put the what the information okay the information of what of okay it's, it's the model that we're going to be put storing the financial periods okay so make sure that you also use singularity okay i hope my spelling of that financial is correct let me confirm it here yes this is correct okay so let's go ahead and run now this and we see uh, the financial period so let's go ahead and clean and then run financial period press enter then you'll see that you have our financial period uh model and also the migration we press control and click here and modify the information in the what in the migration so the first thing a financial period must belong to a what to a biz to a particular company so i'll come here and say table and then say financial period has foreign id for i put company class company class and i make sure that this company is imported otherwise it will not work all right now after making sure that is there so i'm going to, go, to come and give this financial period a name which is going to be a string and then i give it when it is starting and when it is ending and then the most important part i give it a, a what a boolean whether it is active it is it is it is currently opened or it is active okay so me i can call this and maybe state okay i can put me i always like using i always like using uh, words instead of true and false so i'm going to put here string okay string and then go ahead and put what you call status okay so they will have a either active or an inactive financial year, and then we give it a description string and give description and then maybe we may add uh, some few filters so we can put maybe uh, this is going to be a text we can put maybe uh how much do you invest in this financial year that this financial period how much um did you sell in this financial period which profits did you have in this financial period um which which profit do you have in this financial period and also um profit or loss something like that and also what else i think i think that's it i think that's it okay the in total investment and then total sales and then the what the profits okay yeah i think we shall need that one also let's do that so that someone should be able to come back and see okay in this period i made this amount of money i invested this i sold this and this that the um the profit that i made okay something like that i think that can be helpful okay so let's go ahead and do that so we can just simply come here and put string and put big integer and then say um total total investment total investment how much you invested total investment and also total sales and then total profits i think that's enough maybe also total expenses yes that total expenses we may need to know how much you do you spend in this uh, financial year this total date we shall not go there all right i think that's enough to sum up the financial year the starting period the close the end the end period whether it is active or not and then the description and then the company that it belongs to and then its name 
yeah that's enough to sum up with what a financial year i mean a financial period let's go ahead and migrate this okay so i'll go ahead and run php artisan serve ah, sorry oh my god not serve let me end it i cancel it and then php artisan migrate okay so if we and migrate, we go ahead and migrate this table. Now, if we go to our local host, we should be able to see that table of what? Of, of financial period. You see, financial periods are here. Very good. And now we proceed. Now we're going to create the controller for financial period. Okay, so after migrating, then we're going to go ahead and create a controller financial period. So I'll come here and look for the model of financial period. Which is this one, copy financial period. Then after we go ahead and migrate and go to important commands. And then after important commands, we're going to go ahead and create financial period and financial period here okay so i'm going to go ahead and uh, and do what and migrate this so you can have this controller so let's go ahead and migrate it boom we have this controller path i'll copy it route and then go to routes and then i go ahead and add it here after doing that you're going to go now to a financial period controller okay let's go ahead and add it in our menu so to add it to our menu uh maybe we're going to add it to our menu so i'll come here to the administrators part and then come to menu and then come here okay we're going to need i think a section where the company will be making its settings okay for example setting up categories and those stuff we may need a section where a company will be making those settings from okay so let's go ahead and uh, create that section Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, create on the root. We're going to create a, a section called uh, System Config. System Configuration. Where the company will be setting its things. And then you can put here maybe this settings icon. And then in the configuration is where we're going to put. Uh, okay, the first configuration you may even leave it there. And then we can say maybe it should be available to you can even leave it as nothing because it's going to be a main menu so leave the okay you can even put this one financial periods or anything you can leave it as even nothing so you can say maybe it should be available to the system owners and what and the workers should the workers access configurations no the system owners are the one who should be able to access configuration but it can depend on the company by the way sometimes or right, let's make it to the system owners and then update so you have this configuration here so under this system configuration we are going to add financial periods so i'm going to come here to system configuration under it i'm going to put uh financial periods so after here i'm going to go ahead and get a what and make um financial period here Let's get a calendar okay so put financial period so you see i say parent is the system configuration so it means this one going to be a sub menu so you should be able to access this one only the company only the one who should be able to set the financial period and then save so we can even make these stock categories to come here under configuration stock categories let them come under configuration Ah, there and then subcategory should also you see how you move them eh? this is how you move them boom and then save and then since it is the last thing let me make it to be at the last here here after the dashboard okay so if you come here to refresh i'm coming now to the what to the to the uh, to the company owner dashboard you'll see i have now two items on in my dashboard i have the dashboard itself and then the what and then the system configuration and this system configuration can be collapsed and expanded 
standard configuration that is where so things that we don't do every time every time every time every time we put them under what under system configuration so the person be able to come here and configure their financial period and configure their categories and configure their what their um, their stock subcategories so if you see here under configuration i have what uh period okay financial period okay under financial i have financial period i have system categories i have this okay so something like that you get it eh? so okay so now we are going to now to we are going to to work on what on on financial period so because we know that at least uh every cut every stock item should be able to know when we, in which period do we buy it okay so that's why we are going to come here to financial period and then do what and then uh then uh work and fix this one and enable the company to be able to create what financial period all right let's go ahead and do that all right low so let's go ahead and uh, do that let's go ahead and do that uh so we'll come here All right, let's go ahead and uh, do that. Okay, so I'll come here to go to to financial periods. Okay, so coming to financial periods here, this financial period, and then we go to its controller, financial period controller. Financial period controller. So I'm going to come here and say financial periods. So if I refresh here, this should change to financial periods. All right, so let's go ahead and fix the form. So I'll come here and click new. Okay, so the first thing is the company ID. As I told you, we'll first get the user who is logged in. The user who is logged in, we can get them from you equals to admin user. Okay, then after we make this to be hidden. Okay, hidden. And then we make it to be having the default value of what of the company id of a user who is logged in however i'll show you the better way to do that this is not the most secure way i'll show you the most secure way so after i'll go ahead and make this one to be what to be required so rules is required all right that is the name of the financial period okay and then after we go ahead and put the starting date and then the end date Okay, when this financial period started and when this financial period end, ended. Okay, so um, after doing that, we come here to status. Status, we can make it what? Um, periodic. I mean, we can make it uh, a radio. So it can be... And then give it value like this. Active and inactive. And then we give maybe financial period description, okay? Make it text area, okay? And then these others will be calculated, so we remove them. They'll be calculated by the system. So if we come and refresh here, you'll see that we shall be able to do what? To create a financial period, okay? So let's go ahead and create a financial period. All right, so now another thing, we should not allow the company to create two active financial period because you cannot have two active financial period at the same time so what you're going to do we are going to uh to write the logic that will not allow a company to create more than one or to have more than one financial active financial periods okay so how can we do that let's go ahead and write that logic so we're going to write a, a boot function okay so we'll come here to the financial period model Press button and click on it. So we go to the financial period model in this model. So we're going to say when you're creating, we're going to check if this company has uh, an existing active financial period. If it does, if it has it, we throw an error. You can we say you cannot have two active what financial periods. So let's go ahead and do that. So you see, I'm getting here. Boot. And they say when it is creating, you still remember this. So you can pause the video and write this. And say so when it is creating, let me get an active 
uh, financial period okay so i get active financial period from i say active financial period equals to you see how i'm getting it financial period where i or remove this one and then i say where company id equals to company and status equals to active okay so i'm getting do they have any active financial record i mean period okay so i check if if it is there so how do i do i check if it is not null okay if it is not null i am going to throw an error so i say this is how you throw an error i say throw like this and then you say new exception and then i say you cannot have two active financial period first close the other one so that is the logic so i'm putting it on creating also sometimes you can create two financial periods and then he tricked me when he's updating so i also have to listen to the update so let me copy this one and then paste it here and then say updating okay but here in the updating i'll have to check if if it is if the if the id of the active financial period is not this particular id and this is how you check it so you check if it is not null and then you check if this id is not this particular id because you might be changing that particular item okay and then i say if he's trying to activate another uh, financial period by through updating i just stop this person from proceeding i say you cannot have two financial period so that is how you can write that logic that will stop a person to have two active what financial period you can pause the video and then you look at the logic very carefully and understand it you see that is it all right so let's go ahead so that's how you do it and that's the advantages of hooks okay so let's go ahead and uh, refresh here and create our first financial period let me say financial period 2023 and it started maybe in january 2023 january 1st and it will end maybe 2023 2023 december 31st okay until the active financial period okay so 2023 financial period i can say financial year okay so I can say 123, I can give it any name. So it will depend on the company, how they name. And then I put here some details about this financial period. And I submit. So you see, it has successfully created for me. So let us test and see if it will not allow us to create two active financial period. Let me say I have another active financial period called 2024. It is going to start... 2024 first 2024 good let me say it's going to start 2020 2024 january 1st and it's going to end 2024 december 31st and then i try to make it active you see i make it active so some info about 2024 so when I try to submit, let me continue creating. You see, it throws an error. Okay, uh -huh. there is another active financial year. Close it first. You get it, eh? So that is a wise way of doing things. So I make it inactive. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. So I can maybe I can first check here. If it is active if the, if he wants to make this one active and the status is active so if he's creating some uh, an, a financial year that is not active we should not throw an error so that's how you fix it so it is fixed so you see the condition here like if you're trying to create something that is active and it is not the one so you don't allow you okay so you can also do the same here by surrounding this one so if you see that you're trying to set something to be active at the same time it is not the one that we are updating then we throw an error okay yeah so that's it so you can have only one active uh, uh financial year 
at a time all right so after doing that now the next thing that we're going to do we're going to uh fix that table and then we move to the stocks okay so let us fix uh this table let's uh, finalize this table uh so i'll come here to our what to our um, to our controller so i've finished the form you see the form is beautiful then let's go to our controller and finalize it also or like we we'll come to our controller i mean to to our to our grid okay and get the user who is logged in u equals to admin user and then we lock we lock we lock we lock we lock the financial years to the respective company that is logged in and then maybe we can say order by start date descending so that we can have the most latest financial year active so by doing like this we shall have achieved that let us disable batch actions i don't need them and let's go ahead and remove the ids of financial years let's remove the date when they are created okay let's remove the company only we need the watch the financial year name we make it sortable and then you put the start date and then we display a clear start date like this and then we put the end date when it is ending and also display and make it sortable and then we use this status using the label using a label and you say the one which are active they should be in success the one which are inactive they should be in danger then we can hide this okay and then we can make total investment to be sortable for now let's just make it okay number format and then make it sortable and also total sales do the same and then uh total what total display do the same and then also uh what and then also uh total expenses do the same also something like that so if you refresh you'll see that we have a decent table we have a decent table okay we have a decent table that is beautiful that is beautiful beautiful so if you want to make 24 an active year i just simply come here and edit and say this i first inactivate this one and then i come here and edit and then activate this one and that is wait did it work <laughs> i think it did not work okay let us see i come and deactivate this one and then after i come to 2024 and then i activate 2024 good yeah so i think that is okay so i can say maybe order by status order by status so the most active should be on top I so I have put here ask in ascending order. Ouch. All right, I think there is already a filter, so I have to remove it. You see, yeah. So that is beautiful. Okay, you see that is nice. Uh, which time are we remaining with? And see if we can proceed to another thing. I think that time is almost up. Which thing should I do in this remaining period that is important? All right, let's just go ahead and start the stock items. Okay, if we finish well, we have created the, the model, it will also be great. All right, so that's it, that's it, uh, that's it. And uh, then we proceed to what? The stock items according to our database here. Okay, we're going to proceed to stock items. Okay, stock items. So that's where the whole, 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 whole business is going to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and create stock items. Oh, before we go to stock item let's just go and create the logic of company employees they should be able to manage their employees okay and then we know that we are done with that then the next video we create the stock items so we want here um uh the company to be able to add their employees or workers okay so the employee or workers of course it is a user model okay so it is a user model they're going just to be users like other users so we're going to create another model called employees. I mean another controller called employees. And it's going to be referencing the user what? The user model. 
So I'll come here to important commands. I'm going to create a controller. I'm going to give it a unique name. I'm just going to show you that it's not every time that you should call it controller, this controller, this. So, but the most important part, the word controller should be at the last. So I'm going to call this one employees controller. And then it's going to be referencing the user model. That's very important. Okay. So let's go ahead and run this. Then you shall have the employees controller and then I come here to routes here. So it is not necessary that everything should be like the same name here of the model. I can as well change this one to employees like this. That is also okay. Okay, so after creating that, let's go ahead and add this to the menu. Uh, so I'll come here and come to the menu and then come and say employees or you can call them workers, okay? And then I come here to under configuration. I can say they should go so under configuration. And then I go ahead and put here users icon. And then I can go ahead here and put employees like this. And then I put here, I put here what? I put here only the company owners will be able to access their employees and submit. So if I come here and refresh, I should be able to see my employees you see i have my employees maybe you should put it here at the last of the maybe after financial years then employees all right yeah something like that so refresh and now you have after financial years we have employees so companies should be able to manage their employees their respective employees all right now let's go ahead and do the whole logic of uh, employees management okay so we begin by, okay, a company wants to add their employees. So let us go to the controller that we've just created. I'll copy this controller and press Ctrl and P and paste here. So this one will take me to this file. It is just the same as coming to add up admin and then come to employees. We'll be able to get the same thing. All right, so instead of having user here, I'm going to put maybe employees or workers, something like that. So after doing that, I refresh here. I'll see you have workers here. So I'll click on new and then we modify this form of employees. So the company should be able to start adding their respective workers. Good. So let us come to our form module. So uh, let us begin with the most important things. Okay. So I'll come here. Let me, okay. Let's see first things first. And now we're going to begin by saying, by saying, um so we have what you call as okay let us begin by getting the user who is logged in okay after getting the user who is logged in make sure this one is imported we're going to block this person to only create the users for their respective companies so i'm just going to cut this guy and come and put this one here and make give it what uh default to be company employees so if i come and refresh here we'll see that this id has been put as default but here i need to be what to be hidden so it should not be seen okay so this person should not be able to see it all right so the name of the employee so this name is going to be generated okay the name is going to be generated i don't want someone to enter there the name manually okay so let us go ahead and do the logic where someone should be able to the name should be able to be generated so to do that we shall go we shall go to the user model okay and then we create a boot public this is public static boot i don't even know it in the head okay let's guide and Let's get and just get this boot in this financial period. And I don't need, I don't know it even in the head. Uh, then I'll just click on one of these. And then I come here to user and then remove this one and then put your call bracket. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's just public static boot and then and it's boot and then put parent then boot and then put here yeah, creating and then updating. So I'll need, I think that's it, okay? So I need the name to be generated, okay? From first and last name. 
so I can uh, create a function here okay let me just do this one here and there you see so I can say I'll first check if uh, first name is not is not null and last okay let's say that if first name is having uh, if how should I how, how should I match the name okay name equals nothing name equals to nothing now we go and check if first name is not null our time is up but let's just finish this one okay if first name is not null and then we say if first name is not null and it is not empty and it is not empty and str line of this first name is equal to zero and then we say that the name equals to the first name or can say the name equals to first name then we also do the same for the second name okay second name is equal to that one however the second name equal to this and then we trim it okay we trim it trim means that you you're clearing the white space around it okay now remember this is a name okay so after we check if this name is not empty if the name is not empty and the str len of this name is not zero so if it is not empty i'll go ahead and say the model the name okay the, the name in this model should be now this name i don't know where you're getting me all right let me say if this name is not null if this name is not null and it is not empty then i'll update the name in the what in the model okay so in case that someone provides us first and last name then we shall go ahead and do it and update their name by merging them by merging those two names this is how you, you write that logic so you can do that logic on upon upon what upon creating and then you can do that logic upon also updating so i'll just copy this one and then also put here updating All right i think that's okay that's okay so let's go ahead and now uh work on the form and finish this in employees form okay employees form so we're going to have the employee's name and make it okay the name we don't need it as they said we're just going to need first and last name so let's go ahead and cut this first name and make it the first here so we make it required first name is required and also the last name should be required okay so after we're going to get the phone number of this employee should be required also and also the second phone number it should be option because they someone might have only one name one phone number uh, so after uh we need the image that will be the avatar it can be optional some people may not provide the image we remove this remember password okay so after doing that we collect their address and then you collect their sex what you call gender you can put it next here to the by data and then say gender and give it uh, and make it what a radio okay and then we make it to give it options of male and female compiler doesn't suggest things about gender is it gay? <laughs> Male and female. And make it also maybe required. Also and make it optional. Some people may not need to, to specify your gender. Okay. <laughs> can put other. Well, it was genders. Okay, so after uh yep i think that's it and then there's something called section uh, there's something called divider yes divider so this divider i can put here personal information 
and then in this second section you can put here maybe another divider and then say account information this that's where maybe collect the name this address should be in the person information and should be text not text area and also the phone number should be text and this one should be text phone number maybe can come first and then address okay dob it should be optional date of birth you should not have default you can say maybe default and then say minus okay. right, let me just make it not default and it should be optional some people may not need to provide their date of birth like this date of birth All right, so what else? Uh, status, whether it's active or not. Yes, so it's going to be a radio. A radio, and then we go ahead and give it um, options of active and not active. And then... Uh, this is the place where you can say the username and password however that's not the best of doing it but I'll, we shall see how to the better way of doing it uh so you can put here maybe we collect their email as their username and also maybe here when we are when we are saving here in the what in the user controller we make sure that the username the username Username, I mean the, the username equals to the email, and then you return so that you should not confuse us. And then you do the same for the updating. Yep, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. So if we come and refresh here, come and refresh, everything is okay. Only that the name needs to be the name needs to be a text, not a text area. Alright. Yeah, by doing like this, we shall be able to manage our employees. So that's a beautiful form for the employees. Aha, uh -huh, let's add a new employee. Let's add a new employee by just simply coming here, refresh, and then do some fake filler. Okay, maybe his mail, that is their phone number. And then their password is there so i go ahead and submit okay email column is not there seriously how come <laughs> email column is not there let us add it we shall need it we shall surely need it let's add it let's add email column very fast so this is our command to so say maybe add email to admin users table so i'll go ahead and run this command and then we come here and add email like this and then migrate Yep, then everything is be okay, then everything will be fine. All right, let me come back and then we remove this password. We don't need, we need it. Okay, so on creating, on creating a user, on creating a user, they can make their password to be default as one, two, three, four, or as, as admin. Okay, so in creating a user password, but you shall put the logic of passwords resetting by crypt password equals to admin, that is the default password on creating. All right, so let's go ahead and try to submit. Yep, everything is fine. You see, this has been created. We can even change their photo. All right, so that's it. And then let me see uh we can go ahead and 
finish this table of users in the next what in the next lecture i know you guys are already tired all right let's finish the table of users in the next lecture where the companies can be able to add their users and also in the next lecture it is where we're going now to do the real stuff of adding the stock items and also creating the stock records so don't miss in our tomorrow's lecture seven and lecture eight unless there is a question you can ask now if there is